Hello, welcome back. So the plan for today is to start preparing the hose for Aziraphale and to do that I need to make myself a pattern. And to do that I want to make myself a duct tape dummy for my legs. For those who don't know, a duct tape dummy is where you put on an old pair of clothes, wrap yourself up in duct tape and then cut it off so that it retains the shape of your body. And you can do that for just your torso, although you do need a spare pair of hands for that. Or you can do it for your torso and your legs as well. Or, as I'm going to do, you can do it for just your legs. Or, in my case, I'm just going to do one leg. So there's a couple of reasons for this. The first is that the hose for Aziraphale need to be really well fitted to my body. And I'm going to have to do this by myself. I could ask the wife for it, but I want to show that it can be done by yourself if you prepare. And although I can reach the top part of my thighs to fit it without twisting too much, the bottom half I would not be able to do without contorting myself. So I'm going to make a dummy so that I can get a pattern that's already exactly to my measurements so that hopefully I won't have to make any adjustments to it. Now I have done this before, but I need to redo it and there's a couple of reasons for that. The first is these are the pack pieces. They're not very well defined anymore. They were not transferred onto a good material to hold the shape. And I need it to be exact for this project. For the same reason, the reason that they need to fit well, and that they were done several years ago and my shape has changed, I need to redo them to make sure that they still actually fit me. And the third reason is so that I can show you guys what I'm doing, because that's what this whole YouTube business is about, right? Sharing is caring. I should add that those old ones did serve me well. I've made several pairs of shoes out of them, which is what they were made for. So although the pattern has been cut in a slightly different way, I've got two pairs of shoes here that I made using the pattern. One and two. You can see they're slightly different because I've adjusted them. And if I put this pattern against this one like this, you can see where I've used that pattern to get that pair of shoes from. So they have doing a duct tape dummy for your legs has more use than just making hose. So there's a couple of things that you need for this project. The first one is obviously duct tape and the bigger the area that you're going to be duct taping, the more duct tape that you need. I have decided to only do one leg because although most people have one leg that's larger than the other or one foot specifically that's larger than the other, the difference on mine is A, not massive, and B, I'm going to do the bigger one anyway because I know which one that is, and that then will be close enough on the other one as well. If you have a large difference between the two of them, then doing it on both legs is recommended. The other thing that you need is something to cover your legs in, old pieces of clothes. And Matt, if you're watching, look away. I have an old piece of clothing that would otherwise be going in the bin or recycling in this case, but this is an old pair of socks. I have repaired them several times, I'm not just chucking them away because I've got a hole in. This is now beyond my ability to repair, so I'm going to be using these. If you want to do both legs, then a pair of tights would work perfectly well, but they do need to be a proper woolen pair rather than those denier type lady type tights ones. I'm sorry, I'm not an expert in ladies' tights. You don't want to use those fashion-y type ones because they would be too thin and the duct tape would go through to your legs, which is not a good idea. So it needs to be a proper thick pair of tights. Or a pair of leggings with a pair of socks underneath would work as well. I want these to go over the top of my knee, so I need to extend them by putting a cylinder of stretchy material on the top. And I'm also going to cover up the hole just by slipping a piece of material underneath. I also need a pair of scissors that are not fabric scissors for cutting the duct tape afterwards. So something that isn't, that's going to survive having the duct tape taken to them. And you might also want a sharpie or something like that so you can mark where you want to cut them. And a ruler as well will help you get a straighter line. With all of that said and done, there are a couple of things I need to say as well. First of all, I apologize for my voice. I'm just coming off the rear end of an awful cold and Although I'm 90 to 95% better, my voice is still a little bit raspy, so I apologise for that. And the second thing is, this is obviously going to involve feet and legs, and if you have a squick for feet, which I completely understand if you do, I know that some people do, 
I'm sorry, this video is probably not the video for you. No judging at all. If you want to turn off now, please do. In two weeks, there will be another video that does not have feety content. And with all of that said, let's get to the duct tape. Okay, so now as you can see, I'm all prepared with my additional bit that brings my sock over my knee. When I actually pull it up, it goes quite a bit further, so that's all good to go. First step is to fix the hole. So I have a little patch that I'm going to stick in, first of all. I could have sewn this in as well, but sometimes it's easier not to. I was just being lazy, let's be honest. So all I've done is stick that on the inside and then I'm just going to secure it with tape in place. And what I did there is exactly what I'm going to do now for the rest of my foot. Just cover it in tape. The trick is to use small pieces. It's tempting to use a few big pieces, but you get a much better result if you do lots of little tiny ones. So I'm going to be aiming for little squares roughly the same length as the tape is in width and just build them up starting from the bottom and working my way up and at the end of this we should have something usable hopefully okay so that's my foot done you guys probably can't see the difference because some smart person which would be me brought black duct tape to go on the top of black socks, but that's all done and nice and tight. I'm just going to check that there's no missing sections. No, nope, that looks good. So then I'm just going to carry on all the way up the rest of my leg. I'm just going to keep pulling it up whenever it slips to make sure that it's still in the right position. You can see, it feels really strange, how that's it could be a sock. Well, it is essentially a sock made of duct tape. So, yeah, just going to continue with that. Okay, one completely wrapped leg. I've checked it over to make sure there's no holes. You probably noticed I did a strip around the top so I would get a nice even end. So when I did this before, I cut it down to the middle. That's a much easier way to do it because you can see what you're doing by yourself. From the back, I need to try and hit the midpoint, which is going to be a lot more hard on myself, but that's what I need for the hose. What I realised is I should have gone for a silver duct tape so that I could see the sharp here, I wasn't thinking. So I've got a silver gel pen, which does show up for me but won't show up for you. And I'm going to mark the midpoint of my back with that. Obviously this stage is the one where if you can get someone to help you, this is where you want an extra pair of hands because 
it's just going to make your life a lot easier. And I'm just going to start from the bottom up because that's where it's obvious where the midpoint is. Okay, so with that line marked, time to get the scissors out. This is going to be very difficult to show you, so I do apologise. What I need to do is slip it underneath and chop it down on the inside, essentially. So I've looked at the pattern, and the pattern shows the hose going all the way down to the ankle. So what I'm going to do is go all the way down to my ankle, hope I can slip my foot out, so I can then work out the pattern with this off my foot. But for now, I'm just going to concentrate on going down the middle, I've never broken a leg, but I'm assuming that if I had, this would be like taking the cast off. Okay, now it's started, I can show you guys what I'm doing. Can you see? Yeah, you can. Cool. And you can see that's much easier now that it's going. And that's it. So if I peel that off, you can see at the inside of my sock there. I'm Before I take this off, I'm just going to mark around my foot so that when I take it off I can see more or less where the sole is. As you can see the whole procedure would have been a lot easier with a second pair of hands but it is entirely possible by itself. Okay so with that marked, there we go. So pattern, the way it works is it kind of comes up in a triangle up the heel, and then there's another one down the side, so I'm going to try and replicate that. And there we go. So, if I just trim this off as well, then you guys will be able to see that this is very roughly, but roughly, the same pattern that I need for my hose. So I'll be able to transfer this directly onto my fabric and then make a mock-up. So here's the pattern. And here's the heel that I've made. You can see that it's missing at the top back of the heel section. I didn't do that perfectly well, but I can amend that. It also isn't trying to lay flat. I have to fix that when I get to it. And if I show you this again, obviously I've only got to the knee, but again, it's not completely laying flat because of the way that it was done, but it's enough to give me a really good idea. That's then the leg section. So to use this as a pattern piece, what you need to do is just use it as a pattern piece. The only thing to be aware of is because I've cut this in one whole piece, it still has quite a lot of curve to it, so I've had to allow for that. It's essentially the same as putting in a dart. You just have to remember that you've taken that material out. So I just laid it on my fabric. I haven't pinned it because duct tape is really bad for your pins. In this case, it already started coming off from the fabric. So I just took the fabric off the back and stuck it down to the fabric. But if that isn't an option for you, then I would consider using weights. The important measurements that you need to know is where is your knee? because if you're attaching something to it, you need to know where that measurement is to attach it in the right place, essentially. And I've also marked a center point down the middle by folding it in half, so that I can then make sure that it's symmetrical going forward. And that's it. Aside from that, you've got your pattern pieces now, they are cut directly from your leg, so you should be able to get something that fits you really nicely. And that's how simple it is to make one. To do a whole body or even just a torso is a much bigger project and like I said you do need a second pair of hands for it because obviously you just can't reach everywhere for it. But to do your legs it's pretty easy, pretty simple, fairly quick. One thing I did partly discover, partly remember and I think it's also slightly because I used cheap tape but honestly it would happen no matter what happens is that if you leave it for a couple of days the fabric does start to come away from the tape so whatever you're going to do with it you do need to do it promptly i think that's why i didn't have the pieces from the old one i have a vague recollection of it happening to them as well but i think it happened to them much less quickly than it did with these ones which is why i said it's partly cheap tape and 
partly, I guess it could also be partly the fabric. So I managed to fix mine by tearing the fabric off and using paper on the back. It's not perfect, but it still works. But yeah, my recommendation is that if you're going to do this, don't stop halfway through. My only excuse was I'm still recovering from this damn cold, which is why I'm recording this again a couple of days later, because just doing that wore me out. So if you are going to make a dummy from it, I don't recommend using the hose pattern that I use, which is to cut it off in one piece, because it does make it more difficult. What you need to do is cut it down the sides, so you have two pieces that fix together. Even though it seems counterproductive because you then have two seams to tape together, trust me, it just, you get much better flatter laying pieces. In fact, I wouldn't recommend this for any other thing than specifically making hose. If you've got two flat pieces like this, just it's just a lot easier to do everything with them. Now, if I was going to make this into a duct tape model, which I'm not, I would then use tape again to fix the seams back together. You can see how easy that would then come back together and make the shape that it needs to be. That's just from holding it together and you can see the shape of my leg there. So it just takes a little bit of patience to get everything down perfectly and then you can stuff it with stuffing or cabbage, whatever you have lying around, not actual cabbage, scraps of fabric, cabbage. There are a couple of limitations with using these as dummies. The duct tape is not great for your pins. In fact, it's really bad for your pins. I guess the other thing that you could use, you could do is you could use these as a pattern pieces to then make yourself a dummy out of actual fabric and stuff that instead. That would probably be a lot better for your pins. So if it's something that you're going to be using a lot, that's probably what I would try and do. It's something that I've always wanted to try and do. If you're not going to do that, at the very least, I would put a fabric covering over the top of it. Well, A, because that looks nicer, but B, because it's just going to be much better for your pins in the long run. The stickiness of the tape is just not going to do them any good. But yeah, it's a really useful tool for people who need to fit something to their legs and don't have someone around, or people who often have to fit something to their chest and can borrow someone for one day in order to do a chest one, and then from then on you're set going forward. You will be able to see what I'm doing with mine in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. That shouldn't take too long to get together, so I'm hoping that will be the next video. No promises, but it will either be the next video or the one after. So keep an eye out for that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed and a big thank you to anyone who's put a like on this video or any of my other videos. So my question for you guys today is, what do you think of duct tape dummies? Is it something that you've tried or that you want to try? And if you have tried it, have you got any other tips and tricks that you can give people who want to try it in the future in the comments? Because every time I ask something that people have experience in, I get so many lovely tips and tricks that I find super useful, but I'm sure other people do too. So let's gather some knowledge in the comments here and see what happens so that if people haven't tried it before and want to try they'll have even more information than i could ever give out and that's it i shall see you all again in two weeks thanks for sticking with me and see you soon bye guys